Happy Sabbath. How are you all? I hope you all had a wonderful week and enjoying this holiday seasons. We have been talking about the story of Christmas. Last week we studied Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 to 11 and explained the Bethlehem star, the Magi or the wise men. We also mentioned Briefly, the background of Herod the Great and the prophecy from Old Testament about the little town of Bethlehem. Now let's move on to verse 12. Let me read. And the Magi being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Remember, we said King Herod was a sly old serpent. He told the wise men once that they found the location of the newborn king. They should return and tell him so he can go and worship too. The wise man initially thought Herod was sincere and really had intention to worship the newborn king. But God knew better. God knew he would kill the child, so he sent an angel to warn the wise men to go back to their own country by a different route. They may have continued south down to Hebron and then cross over from the south to the Dead Sea, and thus they would be out of the territories of Herod altogether. Let me read verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. After the wise men left, the angel of the Lord appeared also to Joseph, and told him that it was time to get the child out of Bethlehem because Herod would attempt to murder him. Verse 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Joseph instantly obeyed. He took Mary and the young child to Egypt. Notice the Bible said young child and not baby. So it further proved that the wise men came later than the shepherds. Why escape to Egypt and not other places? During the time of Herod the Great, there, was, there were a lot of Jews residing in Alexandria, which was the capital of Egypt at that time. I'm not saying that Jesus went down to Alexandria, but you know, scholars think that maybe, you know, they're not sure. Because Alexandria, the population there, comprised of 35% of Jews. Let's move on to verse 15. And was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt. Have I called my son? The escape to Egypt fulfilled a prophecy from Hosea 11, verse 1. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. This is a prophecy that has historical basis. Let me show you. Out of Egypt, the sun was called, which was the nation, the nation Israel. And out of Egypt, the sun was called, who was the person and the child Jesus this was. God often called Israel, the nation, as his son. You can look it in Exodus 4.22. And remember, after 400 years in Egypt, God called Moses to lead his people out from Egypt to the promised land. But here, this verse in Matthew 
is referring to Jesus, who had to escape to Egypt to avoid being killed by King Herod. And God called him out of Egypt after Herod's death. You know, in the Old Testament, there are quite a few passages that have double meanings. They foretold the coming of the Messiah besides whatever was the context of that verse. And this is one of them. And that means both Old Testament and New Testament are actually one story, the story of God's salvation to humanity. Let me give you a few examples. Look at this graph. The first one, it's about the ark, right? Just as the ark in Old Testament was a place of safety, safe from the flood. So in New Testament, Christ is a place of safety, safe from the destructive sin. Another example. Remember in Old Testament, Genesis 22, verse 1, this verse, Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. So in Old Testament, this verse, Abraham was asked to sacrifice his only son, the son that, whom he, the son that he loved. And in New Testament, we know that there's a story also about someone, and this someone is God, who sacrificed his only son, the son that he loved. And this one is Jesus. Third example. In Old Testament, it talked about Passover lamb. You remember that? The Passover lamb saved the Israelite from the death angel. And in New Testament, the true Passover lamb is Jesus. And Jesus delivers sinners from death. Fourth example, in Old Testament Numbers 21, 8 to 9, And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. And in New Testament, something similar. John 3, 14, 15. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So this Old Testament story is foretelling Jesus, Jesus whom will be lifted up on the cross so that all will live. The fifth example, live goat from the Old Testament. Just as the live goat during the Day of Atonement symbolically carried the sin of the people of Israel, Jesus in New Testament, the Lamb of God, taken upon himself all the sins of humanity. More examples. Remember, Gospel of John also goes on to show how various Jewish festivals are symbols of Jesus' person and work. For instance, during the Feast of Tabernacle, a Greek ceremony called the Illumination of the Temple, which involved the ritual lighting of four golden oil-fed lamps in the court of women. And this was to remind the people of the pillar of fire that had guided Israel in the wilderness journey. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have light of life. John 8, 12. And then there's the water pouring ceremony, also at the Feast of Tabernacle. And it was the only time that the water was poured out onto the altar. And this water was literally called Yahshua, and the water of salvation. In Gospel of John, Jesus, during this occasion, cried out, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. 
He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Remember, Jesus explained to those two men from the road to Emmaus. He talked about how the Old Testament talked about him. So the Old Testament and the New Testament are one story. The story pointing to Jesus and the story of salvation. So let's go back to the story. So, as I mentioned, God told Joseph to stay in Egypt until God called him to return to Israel. So what happened after that? Let me read to you verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked off by the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. As I mentioned before, the wise men did not arrive at the time of the shepherds at the stable. The wise men came later, and according to verse 11, the family had already moved into a house by then. And then when Herod had his private conversation with the wise men, he inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. So he knew approximately how old was the baby. And when the wise men did not return, he was so angry and he killed all the boys around that places be below the age of two. So because he deduced that Jesus was probably between the age of one and two. Herod was a mad man, don't you think? And this is what Britannica Encyclopedia said about Herod the Great. Let me read to you. In his last years, Herod suffered from arterial sclerosis. He had to repress a revolt, became involved in a quarrel with his Nabataean neighbors, and finally lost the favor of Augustus. He was in great pain and a mental and physical disorder. He altered his will three times and finally disinherited and killed his firstborn, Antipater. And the slaying shortly before his death of the infants of Bethlehem was wholly consistent with the disarray into which he had fallen. It also fulfilled which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet. In Rama was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. Verse 17. The place Rama in Hebrew means on high and Bethlehem was in the hill country of Judea. This passage has double meanings. Obviously, it refers to the children being killed by Herod, and the mothers in Judea were weeping and mourning. But also this verse in Jeremiah originally was referring to the mothers in Judah lamenting for their sons because they had been exiled to the foreign heathen land of Babylon. You can read in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 15. However, if you read this chapter in Jeremiah carefully, it is focusing on the promise of bringing back the exile. So symbolically here, Matthew seems to be using these passages from the Old Testament to indicate that Jesus is the fulfillment of the scripture. He is saying, don't mourn, because Jesus will bring about the return of his people from the exile to sin. Next verse, verse 19. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, 
Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. So not long after ordering the horrid murder of the infant boys at Bethlehem, Herod became deathly ill with a painful terminal disease. He died at the age of 69 at his palace in Jericho in March 4 BC. He commanded that many influential Jews to be executed when he died so that people would mourn at the time of his death instead of rejoicing. Can you imagine that? Well, fortunately, the order was not carried out. Nevertheless, an extensive burial procession of national dignitaries and military units marched with Herod's body until where he was buried, near the Herodian. Well, after remaking his will many times, Herod, prior to his death, finally settled on dividing the kingdom between three of his remaining sons, Achilleus, Herod Antipas, and Herod Philip. Let me read to you verse 21 and 22. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Achilleus did reign in Judea in the in the room of his father Herod. He was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream. He turned aside into the parts of Galilee. Achilleus, he was only 19 then when he came on the throne, succeeded his throne over Judea, Samaria, and Idumea. He reigned from 4 BC to 6 BC. AD. And he quickly displayed the same kind of cruelty that had marked his father's reign. He overreacted to an uprising in the temple and Passover after his father's death by sending in troops and cavalry who killed about 3,000 pilgrims. And because of his cruelty, Augustus Caesar fear a revolution from the people. So he deposed Achilleus and banished him to Gaul in AD 6. The rule over Judea was thereafter passed on to Roman rulers called prefects. And one of them later on we read was Pontius Pilate. And this we'll talk about later in one other time. And now let's read verse 23. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, and it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. He shall be called a Nazarene. The Hebrew word for Nazareth was Nasir, meaning a branch or shoot, alluding to the prophetic messianic work at the book of Isaiah 11. From Jesse's roots, a branch, or called Nasir, will bear fruit. The city of Nazareth was so called by the Jews because of its insignificance. But the Lord Jesus was given that term, Nazarene not only because he was a root out of the stem of Jesse, but because he grew up in the city of Nazareth. And he was called a Nazarene, which fulfilled the prophecies. So in this chapter, we see Matthew mentioned four locations, Bethlehem, Egypt, Ramah, Nazareth. And he alluded to the Old Testament prophecies dealing with these locations, which was about the birth of Jesus Christ. And so he has showed us that the prophecies were all fulfilled. And next week, 
we'll continue with the story of Christmas. Happy Sabbath.